hello again to another agricultural reaction. Today we will be watching what really caused the Irish potato famine from St Stephanie Hunter Smith from TED Ed. And uh, TED Ed are usually very good talks. And uh, let's just learn. I'm in Ireland for nearly two decades, and obviously I hear the story of it and how many people died and what was caused. It was caused by, um, I believe it was a bl potato blight. Let's just watch something more. In the fall of 1845, the bright green leaves of potato plants dotted the Irish countryside. For over 200 years, the South American vegetable had thrived in Ireland's rough terrain and unpredictable weather. Packed with carbohydrates, vitamins, and minerals, the potato was a remarkably nutrient-rich crop that made it easy for less wealthy families to maintain a balanced diet. By the mid-19th century, potatoes had supplanted other staple foods, and since British mandates ensured Ireland's more valuable agricultural products were exported, roughly half the country's 8.5 million residents lived almost entirely on potatoes. But when harvesting began in 1845, farmers found their potatoes blackened and shriveled. Those who ate them suffered severe stomach cramps and even death. Today, we know the culprit was Phytophthora infestans, a fungus that flourished in the season's unusually damp weather. But at the time, it was simply called the blight. The fungus likely originated in the Americas, traveling across the Atlantic on ships. And while it destroyed potato harvests across Europe, wealthier countries than as today generally fared better as they had more resources to draw on. Meanwhile, the southern and western regions of Ireland were already impoverished and entirely dependent on this single crop, making them disproportionately vulnerable. The impacts of food insecurity are often most severe at the poverty line. But while the failed harvest created a class crisis, the government's response turned it into a national catastrophe. For centuries, Ireland had been under varying degrees of English control, and by 1845, it was part of the United Kingdom with its government based in London. During the famine's first year, this distant ruling body imported corn from North America and offered the Irish employment on public works projects. But this relief only caused more problems. Imported food was poorly distributed and offered insufficient nutrition, making the previously healthy population more vulnerable to disease and increasing maternal and child mortality. Worse still, the British continued to export Ireland's grain and livestock. Meanwhile, the public works projects required lengthy shifts of grueling manual labor and were far from where most workers lived. For example, just one of countless tragic incidences is the story of Thomas Malone, who walked 18 kilometers round trip to work every day. One night, exhausted and starving, he collapsed and died just before reaching home, leaving behind his wife and six children. Despite the year's countless tragedies, many families managed to scrape by. But in 1846, the damp weather returned and the blight worsened, oh, impacting 75% of Ireland's potato yield. Mm. British relief efforts diminished substantially in the famine's second year. And while international aid helped save lives, the overall need was enormous. As the crisis wore on, the government limited who was eligible for relief and tasked Ireland with funding the relief efforts themselves by increasing local taxes. Most modern historians view these disastrous policies as stemming from a mix of toxic religious ideology, laissez-faire economic policies, and political infighting. British news sources callously depicted the Irish as lazy, simple-minded alcoholics, and some London decision makers believed the famine was God's punishment for these sinful behaviors. Other government officials purposefully blocked efforts to provide meaningful relief due to internal political rivalries. As with famines and food insecurity today, it wasn't a lack of resources preventing the British from aiding Ireland, but rather a lack of political will. Yeah. Seven I years after the blight well. began, Ireland's weather patterns returned to normal and the potato crop finally stabilized. But over one million people had perished from starvation, malnutrition, and disease. Between one and two million more fled the country, beginning a trend that dropped Ireland's population to half its pre-famine levels by the 1920s. Today, climate change is making extreme weather more common and sustained, leading countless agricultural communities to face similar struggles. Hello, Miller. Just as in Ireland, farmers living on the margins are increasingly facing starvation, malnutrition, and disease Hello. due to global weather patterns for which they bear little responsibility. 
But history doesn't have to repeat itself if governments and institutions can provide the kind of aid these regions need. Relief efforts that are coordinated and ongoing provide sufficient nutrition to prevent disease and are offered with compassion rather than judgment. Mitigating the chance of disease requires a life-saving combination of science and collaboration. Mm -hmm. And it can be quite a delicate business. For example, learn exactly how we turn the water that goes down our drains into water that's safe to drink with this video. That's actually a pretty good thing. A lot of people don't realize how water in the taps is actually made. And uh, I'm, I'm digressing, uh, uh, digressing, digressing uh, from the well, I was just watching. Yeah, so basically, like I said, I'm living in Ireland nearly 20 years. So uh, obviously I heard multiple times about the Irish famine and the consequences of it. The fact that the so little people, like half of the population pretty much was gone, uh, either because they died or they emigrated most of the time to America. And um, yeah, the, to the t tales about how English were treating Irish are terrible. Like, and just mind boggling and it's just all out so sometimes the stories would be just i would put them together on the same level like the nazis have treated jews and it's just it's terrible it's just terrible how pe irish people were treated by english back then um yeah so basically the fact that similar situations happen you know yes Millie, i know i can hear you um yeah we should be thinking about Okay, she wanna go out. It will be thinking about just how to can we can help people without actually, you know, putting them into more trouble. Thank you very much for watching. I see you tomorrow. Bye.